Hello, all you fancy people making fancy apps in Bubble.is. Welcome back. Today, we're going to continue the work on our login screen. Now, it's been a while since I made a tutorial and the template I was using to teach you. I've made irreparable changes to, and I don't know how to reset it to the place where we were in our tutorial flow, so I'm just going to start using this one here. Now, most of this stuff is exactly the same. Uh, the major changes being you don't have this checkbox, and this is your mobile OAuth buttons. They will be below these, I believe, in the tutorial that you're following. But it's mostly inconsequential to your learning process, so I'll just continue from here. Now you have to make a decision. Uh, either you want login to show up first, or you want sign up to show up first, and the implications are, is your user something like a staff or somebody who needs to be signed up to use your service? Then you want login to show up first. And if it's targeted towards the mass consumer and your idea is to drive more consumers through the funnel, then your sign up should be the first thing that shows up. So I don't know which one we're going to do. We're going to figure it out as we go. Um, but basically, we have here this call to action that's going to switch between login and sign up. So that's the first thing we're going to set up. So we're going to double click on the text and we're going to go start edit workflow. Now, it's not ideal because the entire text will be clickable. Normally, I would put some text and then another text, and then another text, and I would click on just the sign up text. Um, but that's a lot of work for a tutorial, so we're not gonna do that. If you guys wanna do that, go ahead, put three texts in one that's sign up, and only make the sign up text clickable. Otherwise, please do follow along. So let's go to here and let's set a state. As I've said before, setting states is basically a variable that lives at the browser level, at the user level. It doesn't store in your database, and it reads and writes much quicker than anything you can put in your data tab which makes it very useful. It also is important to keep in mind that it resets as soon as your user closes their browser window or navigates away. So let's go ahead and change the state of something. We're gonna use snap holder because I've already used it and I have a yes, no. You create a new custom state, you call it whatever you want. Usually I use is login or is sign up. <clears throat> the state type will be a yes, no. And it's important to realize that this yes, no, um, always starts off as a no or as an empty and then you have to set it. So let's go is login value and let's set that to a mm, no. What's the text say? Are you new here? Sign up. Yes. So we're going to set it to a no because this will show up when it's login. So let's go conditional and say when um, snap holder is login is yes. This element is visible. True. Let's make it invisible on page load. Okay, make sure that this is invisible on page load. And let's copy that and let's paste it in there and let's do the exact opposite. So we have this text. Uh, when you paste, it actually puts it 10 pixels over on either axis. So we're gonna realign it and we're gonna change the text that's inside. We're gonna say, already have an account, then log in instead. Okay, good stuff. And this one has to do the opposite and basically set state of snap holder to be is login to be yes. Okay, so let's make something. Okay, so this one is also invisible on page load and the conditional is if snap holders login is yes. So now we should be able to switch back and forth between states, right? Oh, they're both visible. Why are they both visible? Are they both yes? Did I make that mistake? Yes, they're both yes. So this one should be is no or is empty. Or well, we have to rewrite snap holders is login is formatted as text is empty. Okay, now only one of them should show up. It's the login. Are you new here? Sign up instead. Let's click on here. Bang. Already you have an account. Login instead. Okay, we just forgot our question mark. Are we really worried about it? Yeah, why not be professional about it? Now we can put a conditional here as well and say when snap holders is login is a no or snap holders is login formatted as text is empty, which is the state when you first load the page. So when we load the page, it should say login, and now it says sign up. Great stuff. And the last thing to change is this button right here. We can actually just grab this condition 
and paste it in here. Oops, I made a mistake. We can grab this condition and paste it in here. Nailed it. Text, sign up. This is slightly different though. Nailed it. Okay, so now we have a way that we can switch between login and sign up just by clicking on this text right here. The next thing we need to do is actually make this button work and then we're done. So let's go start edit workflow. Let's go account. Let's go sign the user up. And Bubble makes this so incredibly easy that it's almost excruciating. Uh, sometimes not that easy. Sometimes the dependency trees break and you don't have access to um, all of the inputs because Bubble tries to sort things according to what you're allowed to access here. In this case, it should be an email, but it's not available. Um, so I find sometimes moving the button around um, actually will give you access to uh, that particular input which you need. Sometimes moving the button around uh, along the dependencies will actually fix it, but it's definitely a bubble bug. So I put it on the index and I found input emails value. So not excruciatingly easy, but easy enough. So let's go yes here. Let's go account, log the user in. Um, and again, input emails value and input passwords value for email and password, easy as pie. And let's go yes and send the user up. Yes. And we're just going to fix those. Remember the email options in just a moment. Let's put this login back where it belongs. Back to start edit workflow. Now we can actually add conditionals here and we can go in snap holder uh, is login is we're signing up. So is no. Um, and or instead of is no, we have to go formatted as text. Yes is not yes. So basically if it's empty or if it's no. And remember the email, uh, our checkbox, remember me's checked is yes. Uh, if you're using a bubble checkbox uh, is checked or is unchecked instead of the checkbox that uh, I suggest you design following one of my tutorials. Anyways, so I'm sure you could figure that out. Uh, let's actually just copy this expression and let's paste that in here. And now we want um, is login is yes and check remember means checked is yes so basically this logs it in if the is login is a yes and signs the user in if uh is not yes so basically if it's no and they're both remembered right now so let's actually just copy these paste them in here and change these to no and no and copy this one and do the same thing here and basically say don't remember the email no no and no. Super. So this should work. So let's go ahead and navigate away. Go to page index. And we're going to add a little handler just to um, basically test this. We're going to add a handler that's fresh. Let's hide everything here. Let's go to button. Let's go here. Make a big button that says log out plus. I don't care. I'm leaving it like that. <laughs> Insert dynamic data current user. And now if the user's logged in, you'll have an email. Uh, that they use to log in. So we'll display that in the button as well. And in the button, we're going to actually log the user out. And by out, I actually mean out. And that's easy too, you can see. And navigate, go to page and index. We're going to send a parameter p equals login. If you don't understand this parameter thing, uh, just go back a couple tutorials to our navigation examples and you'll figure it out pretty quickly. And the last thing we need to do before we preview is say not visible on page load, but if get data from page URLs, parameter P is fresh, then this element is visible. Yes. Otherwise, not visible. Let's preview that. And here's our login page. This is from a prior test. Don't worry about it. Um, email will be true 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 at gmail.com in our first test our password will be ASDF and we'll go remember me yes so let's log in okay we couldn't find a user because it doesn't exist go we'll sign up instead sign up and there's true 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 signed up as a user we'll find true 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 in our data tab under all users 
There's true, 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 and the rest of my tests. Cool, cool. Log him out, or her. We don't know who it is. Now let's go with, uh, let's, mm, actually we, we should be able to log in right now. Uh, the password and the user are saved. Yeah, it worked. And let's go, okay, without remember me, but this, I know right now it won't work. Don't save, go back, and it stays, okay. Because we never navigated away from the page, um, it saved it, but if we were to, I think, refresh the page, I think it would go away. Mm, it didn't go away. That's weird. What if we went to another page? And then went back to the page. Okay, it still remembers. I think we, what we have to do is go to uh, start the workflow for the lo uh, for the login. We have to say element action reset inputs and put that here. Let's preview that. <clears throat> true, true, true is still here, even though we oh yeah, true, true. We said remember me. Let's go. Don't remember me at email dot com password again asdf. Uh, remember me? No, don't remember me. And log in. Now it's shh. Right. Sign up instead. Perfect. Don't save. Log out. And it remembered true, true, true. It did not remember don't remember me. Perfect. So everything works. Um, and in the next tutorial, we'll do forgot password and we'll add a handler for logins who say um, for emails that don't exist. Uh, we do want a handler that's a little bit more elegant than whatever the hell this is. So we're going to build that out in the next tutorial.